Trevor here, co-founder of Peak Flow Media. Today, we're going to talk about who am I, who is Marcus, and who is Peak Flow Media. So, this video is actually from a live stream we did on Facebook, and we currently do live streams every single Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. So, make sure if you're interested, join our Facebook group down below. It's completely free and network with our community of high-ticket e-commerce entrepreneurs. So, with that being said, let's get on to this video. And you will actually find out inside of this video who is Marcus, aka my business partner, and who am I in my background and his background, how we eventually started with low ticket dropshipping, found a um, few mentors, and eventually did high ticket dropshipping going uh, all the way starting from 2021 till present. So still doing high ticket dropshipping. I don't think it's going to be ending anytime soon. So I'll catch you guys inside the video. All right. Yo, how you doing, Trevor? What's going on? It's been working. How been you working? feel? Yeah, me too. Just been grinding, dude. I mean, like, I know we're supposed to go on stream and stuff right now, but let's just like, um, just give a little recap, of, like, what's going on, dude. Yesterday, my mom told me to slow down. Really? For the first time in my life, and it was just like a such a big moment for me because, like, you know, like growing up as an Asian American in New York. Dude, like I was always compared to with other kids, like, you know, get good grades and then comparing like, oh, what's your son's grades? What's your son's grades? And uh -huh. always it's always been like that. So like I've always tried to like work math fast. Mm -hmm. And then like for the first time, ever, my mom never tells me to slow down. She's like, make more money, like go hard, go hard. Right. Because she's like about it. But she's like, yo, like, like I'm seeing what you're doing. Baby, like slow down. <laughs> like the faster <laughs> you move, like the, the older we age, remember, like I'm like, yo, like. Sometimes you we get so caught up in like that pursuit of like that shiny object. Mm -hmm. There's also love in like the pr progress as well, right? Like, how do you feel about that? Yeah, it's very very similar for my family as well. But really, yeah they they always tell me to like move faster though. It's the exact opposite. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They told me to move fast like for so long, but my mom for the first time told me to slow down. So I was just like. <laughs> mom i'm not slowing now like, <laughs> Gotta keep I, the like I, moving. I listened i was like oh like you know like that's nice but nah <laughs> like because we gotta you know we gotta go on this live and you know share some genuine value with our audience right so actually today's call i want to start off by just recapping some of the um calls i've been having with people that have been applying to like our mentorship program and our done for you service by the way if you are interested the application is down below to see if you're a qualified fit. And I was on calls. I got a lot of uh, visions or, or I start understanding that some people want to kind of like make a change in their life, but never had the opportunity for, for someone to just ask them like, oh, like what does financial freedom look like for you? Because that's like the most common thing that I get when I'm talking to like these clients, right? They're like, oh, I, I want to, you know, make money. I want to be financially free. And then I ask, like, if you're to put a number on that, you know, what is that number? And some people, like, everybody has different ranges. That's the cool thing. Like, some people are like, oh, I just want 5,000 profit. Some are like, I want 30,000 profit. Some are like, I just want to buy my um parents like a home and call it a day. So it's just like 300. So, like, what's your, like, I'm, I'm asking you right now, like, to the camera, like, what is your idea of financial freedom? I think if you're going to shoot and if you're like, oh, I want to get financial freedom, put a number to it, right? For me, I have my number for Trevor. Trevor has his number. And once you figure out your number, that's how we dissect and get to where we want to go. So like one of my clients that actually he just joined our program, shout out to Tommy, right? Tommy, mm -hmm. saying shout out to you. Um, We were talking and then we're like, oh, okay, so like, I hope I, I hope I don't disclose too, too much, but like, let's just say like, he was like, oh, financial freedom for me looks like $3 million, right? Like I want to have 3 million cash, uh, some for this, some, for, and guys, I'm just like, I, I forgot the number, but it was like, he was, let's just say it was 3 million. Um, he's like, I want a million for this, a million for that. And I want to retire my family. So like, for me, I need to get to like 3 million. I need to get to in like the next 20 years. So I'm like, so you have to like really plan out. Okay. If you're trying to make that financial freedom money, how much do you want to make? And you got to like backtrack and game plan and figure it out, right? So um, for example, I'm going to share my screen right now. Oh yeah, it's me talking. Weird. 
All right. So I'm just doing this just because like when I was talking to him and I was just doing the math right in front of him, like he seemed to like be like, oh, well, I, I kind of never thought about it like that. So it just inspired me. Maybe other people have never thought about it like this. But like, let's just say you're trying to make three million dollars in the next 20 years. If you divide that by 20, that means, oh, shit, I can't even do math. This guy's trying to teach you financial freedom and can't even do math. Three million divided by 20. You got to make. A hundred fifty thousand dollars. They do it right. Yep, that's that's right. So you have to make a hundred fifty thousand dollars a year for twenty years. Correct me if I'm wrong, Trevor. That's the math, right? Yep. Yeah, I don't know how they got this. <laughs> You're right. Hundred fifty thousand dollars for twenty years equates to three million. However, uh, you have to consider if you're making a hundred fifty thousand, uh, you're out, you're on the really high tax tax bracket. So like. Um, they're going to take like 40%. So you have to overestimate, uh, let's just say by like another 60%, I would say. Um, no, no, 40%, 40%, 60,000. So you would have to make roughly like $200,000 every single year net for you to get to that $3 million mark in the next 20 years. Now, if you're going to break that down, what are your metrics right now? So like if you're only making like 100,000 and that's like, the that's the ideal, right? For any... Uh, when I was in corporate, it's like, oh, if you make six figures, you're like elite. Like that's how the the stigma was. But like, but let's just say you're making a hundred grand, and you have you have to spend money on like like hundred grand divided by twelve. You you're maybe pocketing like eight thousand three hundred around a month, right? But you have like two thousand for like rent, car, and and how much are you actually saving to accumulate that two hundred grand? cash coming in to save up for that three mil like it's, it's almost impossible like that's why this is a a very like hard way to like go out of it like how, how do you do it so the the answer to that is by building you know passive income or as passive as it can get right looking for different streams of income looking for different side hustles and obviously right now uh me and trevor we know drop shipping i can't speak for other stuff like i don't know um, like affiliate marketing or SMA, like I know it, but I don't know, know it. Like, I'm not going to say like, I'm an expert at that, but like in terms of job shipping, that's one way to build a passive income, but there's so many different ways. And I'm just saying all this to say, like, I think it's uh, needs to be brought into light that like, if you're trying to maybe one day retire your parents or retire yourself by the age of like 50 or something, or just, you know, your own different like visions and goals, like quantify it, put it into metrics, look at like how much you got to do uh, how much you got to make in that long-term 20-year plan and how much you got to do in like a one-year plan. And then from then on, I mean, if you have to make, let's just say $100,000, $200,000 in one year, that means every single month you need to be saving around like sixteen, seventeen thousand, like after your expenses and stuff for you to hit your metrics. And the more you're not doing that, the more you're just away from your goal. So like there is, it's possible guys, like I'm here to let you know, like it's possible to make this type of money. It's not easy because there is something known as ignorance debt, which is when you just don't know what you don't know, right? Like, like you just coming into like a new business model, like no matter what, like you're going to have to know, like learn stuff. The only way you could fast track it is through mentorships or by having someone that's done it before you just show you the way that's going to fast track it. But at the end of the day, uh, you need to take action. You need to get, you know, your information and then implement that information. Don't be into analysis paralysis. The longer, uh, like the more you stall and wait to do it tomorrow or do it next week. And the, and <laughs> you're costing yourself like 16 grand every single month, bro. Like for not knowing how to do something for not knowing how to make that type of money, you're costing yourself this much. Right. Like if your goal is to make three million, you got to make sixteen point seven thousand um, and, and put that into the account or, or grow it somehow. Like th these are your metrics. And if you're not doing it, man, like like what are you doing? Like what are you doing? Like for real. Anyways, um, and, enough of my spirit. Like that was just the big takeaway. I just want to show, show people that like, yo, like this is how you got to look at the game. Like if you're trying to get that financial freedom, you're trying to make millions of dollars, like plan it, figure out your metrics. And um, that's really a Trevor. Um. I know you also have like uh, a presentation going on and we're going to go into that right now. Uh, let's just real quick though, uh, share with people like our stories a little bit. of just like how we got into the game. Um, you want to go first or me? 
Uh, you go first. You Me go first? first? Okay, 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 okay. All right. So I started off drop shipping when I was in college. So I got into like e-com because I was in like a business class. I was in college. And then there was this dude in my same business group and he did drop shipping and he was making like 30 grand, 40 grand a month. And for me at the time, I was just like, like, like we all have like paradigm shifts in our lives. Like when you see somebody else doing it, like literally doing it, he's li- like, we're literally working together on like some marketing uh, class and he's throwing out like crazy, like Facebook ads shit and like funnel. And I'm like, what is he talking about? But you see that it's possible. I'm like, yo, he's sure. smart, but it's like, yo, like I think I could do it too. So I asked him for mentorship. He told me like, oh, now nah, it's like 10 grand. I didn't have 10 grand for mentorship at the time. So I was just like, fuck it. Like, I'm going to go and use the money that I have on YouTube. And I'm just going to like learn it and go, like, just go as I do. And then I took about like two years to just like learn and just like understand it. And that's like, uh, of a, a period that most aren't able to have like bro imagine just two years of being able to just like learn but the good thing was that like i was in college at the time like i knew that like it takes time to learn something right i thankfully i don't know how i i, I like just had that innate feeling in me but i was like yo like if i don't start and if i don't take advantage of college right now where like all i have to do my job right now is just get good grades and i'm not gonna put my time into learning something else and i'm gonna be fucking like miserable uh, when I hit that nine to five, because I did do that nine to five. Um, I had a summer internship and no, no harsh, um, bad things to, to my internship. Like it was a really good internship. I was like real estate, uh, private brokerage firm, but it was like the commute that I, I couldn't stand. And it was the fact that I felt like I wasn't growing as a person. Like I was, uh, I don't, I was, you know, like, I don't know if you ever know in, in, in your place, but there's like those weed pens, you know, those weed pens. You ever seen that? Not in my place. Yeah, good. Don't even don't even know. Don't about it. But basically, like I'm um, in New York. Um, Usually, like people smoke weed like with a blunt. But then there's like weed pen, like a vape, right? Like a vape. And I was smoking that um all the time and not caring. Like not like a not in a way like where I was like, I want to die. Like I wasn't like like suicidal but i was just like bro like i don't care like all i did was like i got um super high all the time i got like fat and i just didn't care if i lived the next day or not i was just that was just how i felt in there and i knew that like if i don't do something about it then this shit is gonna get worse because if this is a fucking internship right now during my summer i can't imagine what it's like like afterwards and 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 that like fear of just like losing myself and like just not, bro. I just didn't like who I was. I was just looking at the mirror. I was fat. I was just smoking the vape all day and I was partying. And so I was just drinking all the time. I was just unhappy. And so that what started that fire for me to like learn in college. And then once, uh, it t- took me about like two years. And then I lost all my money. I lost all my savings <laughs> from like reselling shoes. I lost all my money. I was down to like my last $2,000. And then uh Shri Kanase came into my life. Trevor, I know you know Shri. <laughs> Shout out to Shri, man. Shri, you're the man. But Shri changed my life. I, I can't take it away from him because during that time, Shri Kanase, for those that don't know, he's a Google Ads expert. He has Yuru Marketing as his digital agency. So shout out to that's like really cool. But he changed my life. When I was down to my last 2000, he hasn't he wasn't blown up yet. He just had like 400, 500, 800 views. So I just hit him up and I'm like, yo, like, are you doing mentorship? And I'll like, I'll pay you. And I was probably one of like his earlier pioneer students. So he just showed me like how to run Google ads. And he brought me to like my first $30,000 a month um, right when I graduated. So that was the time when I was just like telling my mom and dad, like, yo, like I'm making this, I'm making that money. Like I'm going to try to do this shit full time. And so I think a lot of people have that hard jump. And uh, for me, it wasn't like a, like an easy jump either to, to go into e-commerce, but like, Every, everyone has to make that decision for themselves. I feel like for me, I just didn't want to go back to a place where I was like just mortally unhappy and just not caring if I lived the next day. Like, bro, that's not something you want to, you know, go with. And so um, that gave me like, I just cushioned myself for two years. And and for those that be like, yo, I don't have two years. Like I got to get bills paid. Like I got, you know, responsibilities. Yeah. I mean, that's the point of our mentorship program. That's the point of all the course information that we have. You know, it's so that you could minimize that time frame. 
But generally speaking, like, yo, that's how I got into the game. And then once I started making money, that's the thing, right? Like you would think that's like the end story. No, my friend, like life, you gonna have ups, downs, everything around. I started making mad money. I increased my lifestyle, started like just blowing shit like spending fancy dates, dinners, and like, oh, like arrogant, dumb. Like, I just look at myself like, bro, stupid, young, arrogant. And then um, during that time, as 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 I'm scaling the business, uh, my financial started going out of whack, order fulfillment, customer service, all of that started like just going downhill for me. And then uh, I went into debt because I increased my lifestyle. I wasn't managing things correctly. I was just like, uh, like like everything you would see in like a in, in a young 22 23 year old making money is like what I what I went through. I'm sure Trevor you could relate in some sense as well. Um mm-hmm. like you have your your sides ups and downs, but for me that's how I got into like crazy debt and I was just remember just looking at myself like like fuck oh, because do I I have to make a choice right now, right? Do I go with the route that made me lose mad money? And just keep on going and hoping that it's going to work or, you know, just get a job and, you know, make that money back. Like it'll take a few years, but I could do it. Right. So obviously I had to make a choice and it wasn't an easy choice, but thank God, like I stuck it through and I just, I stayed the course. And I was just like, all right, like obviously something works if I'm able to make, um, okay. By the way, how, like how I got into debt because is I scaled this portal air conditioner. So Ah, uh, long story short, bad product, bad service, bad infrastructure got me into debt, and then I had to figure out how, and then that's when I discovered like high ticket drop shipping. So I started selling. At first, it was patio heaters. So during the pandemic, um, patio heaters shot up like crazy for like restaurants and outdoor dining. So it was like a huge demand. So I was able to like get some sales from there. I was using eBay as my fulfillment center, and then um, I couldn't scale it too long, but it was just like yo, like this high ticket thing. Like I think I could make it work. And that's why I actually discovered the authorized dealer high ticket e-com business model, the business model that both me and Trevor today, uh, we practice, you know, if you guys are wondering, yes, like we still have our own drop shipping stores. Uh, we think it's actually very foolish for coaches and people in the game to like get away from the craft that got them there in the first place. So our mindset when it comes to like peak flow, when it comes to all our students, everyone in the program is that like, we are doing it as we teach you guys. So like you guys are having the forefront, you know, lessons that we know. And so that's, that's the power of community. That's the power of network. Your network is your net worth. But overall I discovered high ticket drop shipping, but you would think like, Oh, you discover automatically. You're going to like make all that money back. Like, no, it doesn't work like that. I spent like two years to just even understand the business model even more, because when you're running a business, I don't want to get too businessy, but you'll have like marketing, operations, sales, finance, team management, like you have to learn and and practice all of that. So it took me a few years to really like hone my practice. And then I was at the last missing piece for me. Um, And that's how like, like, that's how my stuff kind of like came into about my last missing piece was like really understanding the ads. And that's where I kind of met Trevor or like we, we knew, we knew each other back then, but I started reconnecting with Trevor because of like the ads, um, which Trevor has his own uh, like story behind, I'm pretty sure. But overall, like for me, the best way I can explain, I'm gonna wrap it up right now, is like imagine a wall, like a like a rocky wall, and there's water dripping every time you're like just trying to knock at it. That's like the water, the drip, that's like your perseverance and just drips and drips. And I was just at the point where like I've been dripping and the wave just kind of just like knocked down. And that's when I start seeing like a fuck ton of sales. And things started just finally working and working the way I wanted to. Like not just getting sale, but actually delivering good customer service for my customers. It was because from my end, I had built up the skills in terms of like having the right team operations. I understood the model. And I was really just lacking a little bit of like the ads where Trevor um, shot, like showed me his waterfall strategy. And uh, that changed my game again, which we uh, shown our uh, programs as well. But anyways, Trevor, I feel like I, I was talking too much. So. No, it's great. Like you did a great explanation on your story. It's very I bro. That was my life. Like obviously, <laughs> like there were a lot more small details, but I, but yeah, I mean, yo, like what? Where where did you start? And like, how did you get into the game? Yeah, I actually prepared a presentation. If you could just, uh, oh yeah, yeah, enable sharing. Um, oh, cool. how I started was um, 
I actually like new e-commerce. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, so here's my background. So I started e-commerce when I was 12. So I saw like a dropshipping ad. So this was when I was um like really young. I don't know what grade I was in, but I I was basically like playing video games all day, Minecraft and all that. Um and essentially like I I saw a dropshipping ad on YouTube one day and that was when I um essentially got exposed to the dropshipping model. Um I watched quite a few videos on like what dropshipping was and what e-commerce was and it, and it made sense. It's not that complicated at the end of the day. But when I was 12, I could not open up an LLC on my own. Right. But something interesting that I did was uh, when I was around like 12, 13, 14, I did what was like eBay dropshipping, where it is basically you sell AliExpress products on eBay and you just ship it to the customers instead of making a website. So I sold fidget spinners during that time, um, made some profit, End of story, basically PayPal, like hold all my money. And I still don't have that money to this day. Um, along the way, I did a lot of other business models. I basically did agency, affiliate marketing, content sites. There's a lot of businesses that, um, well, SMMA, I did land a few clients. Um, affiliate marketing, I did some minor success. But all of these businesses that I did, I had minor success, but never like a breakthrough that like mm -hmm. propelled me to the next level. So after that, this was my actual breakthrough, which was Facebook Marketplace dropshipping. I did this for about two to three years and essentially um, scaled over to seven figures revenue really fast. Um, and essentially, I started with only $2,000. So this <laughs> business alone just gave me a lot of capital. What in the world? Um, but end of story for Facebook Marketplace dropshipping, um, basically, the platform kind of did some algorithm changes and the business was not sustainable. I was making like one $2,000 towards the very end. So I just called it quits, shut it off. And at this time, around that time, I started doing low ticket dropshipping. And like Marcus said, discovered Sri Kanase, which <laughs> joined his shout out Sri, man, shout out Sri, joined his program. And I found like his Google ad strategy was like, really good it it worked for me like it was like month two i was already profitable mm. i was scaling a lot of products um one of them were like uh drawing tablets and like drawing tables for like artists um and even christmas trees as well so a lot of interesting products but all of them eventually died because uh well people were just copying my my website and my products so it really it taught me that dropshipping is possible because I did revenue and profits with low ticket dropshipping, uh, but it showed me that having a weak infrastructure like rely on eBay and right, um, and just having a weak infrastructure meaning like inventory out of stock, low quality products, and all that, which was why I eventually discovered high ticket dropshipping in late 2021, and um, we're still doing it to this day. And eventually, high ticket dropshipping basically solved a lot of the issues that I saw with low ticket dropshipping, where low quality products, slow shipping times, um, unhappy customers were all essentially solved with high ticket dropshipping. So that's kind of a little bit about my background. Just been in the game for quite some time with a lot of different business models. Um, but besides that, I actually went to college about a year ago, back in July. I enrolled for software uh, engineering and I dropped out a month later after realizing it was complete BS. <laughs> basically, I told my parents that, well, they basically told me it's your decision at the end of the day if you want to pursue business or if I um, wanted to go with college. But obviously, my parents were encouraging that, uh, encouraging me to do, go to college because it was, you know, the right move to. Right. To go towards for like most parents but basically i trusted my gut and i dropped out of college a uh, month in and um that's when high ticket dropping started to take off and fast forward probably a year that's when uh, we met and um essentially created the peak flow uh community and here we are um, helping students um change their lives essentially what exactly got us to this position 
we're teaching others how to do that. Um, nice. So just wanted to do a quick um, summary. I, of- real quick, real quick, though, right before we go into like high ticket drop shipping, I just want to say, um, yo, that was a really cool story. Actually, I, I learned some new things about you, Trevor, from that as well. And um, I just want to know your thoughts on this, too. I was just thinking about this right before we go into this stuff is like. If I was thinking about this thought, if we're trying to be like the greatest of all time when it comes to drop shipping, right? Mm-hmm. We we literally have to pave the road for the next generation, which is what I always have as like uh like sometimes you feel like you, you want to hold back some information, right? Or at least that's how I feel sometimes. Like it's like, yo, bro, like I went through five years of this stuff. And like, I had to learn everything. Like, I'm just telling you all, so there, there's always, like, I'm telling you guys with every coaching, like there's always going to be that type of um, like feeling like there's just like, you're going to think, are they holding back information? But I've realized that if I can't speak for Trevor, I can speak for myself. If I'm trying to be one of the greatest of all time, and I'm trying to generally impact people's lives in a positive way, then it means that you should have the access of information that I wish I did. Right. That's that's it. Like everything that we're about to show you guys came from trial and error, five plus years of knowledge and wisdom into a grouped up like presentation and our course information, all of that. Like, yo, like it it really took a lot of blood, sweat and tears. And so if you're somebody right now that's like really trying to figure out like where you're going with life, you're trying to look for different business models. There are tons. And this is just what has worked for me and Trevor and these were our stories. And this is how we got to where we are today, sharing with you this business model and what we know. So Trevor, take the show, buddy. Yeah, just wanted to um, go off what you just said. Like, I tried so many business models, and this was the one that essentially propelled me. I've been doing this for nearly two plus years now. And from the looks of it, it's it's always going to be growing. Um, in Evergreen. So- business that right. I'm going to be keeping. So if you're considering all these other business models, then by all means, any of them work. But f- tr- truly speaking from the bottom of my heart, this is the business model that I recommend for absolute beginners because it teaches you a lot of skills. Like with high ticket dropshipping um, compared to just traditional dropshipping is probably what you guys are aware of is with traditional dropshipping, you have to create demand from zero. Meaning, like if you're selling like a sun sunset light from TikTok or something, and nobody knows of that sunset light, so you have to create demand from show, zero. Show them a picture of the sunset light. Show them the picture of a sunset light. <laughs> I don't have one. Oh, on here. Fine. But like it can be anything, like rose bears. I know a lot of people um, yeah. sell those. But having to create demand from zero is hard, especially for a beginner that is new to business. Mm-hmm. So with high ticket, you sell um, you sell the people that are already looking for the products you sell, which is very unique. People basically come to you instead of you coming to the customer. Right. So it's buyer intent traffic. Along with that, we have a high profit for sale. So very, uh, very average profit margins for high ticket is like 20, 25%. And if you sell like a three thousand dollar product, you can make anywhere from seven fifty to a thousand dollars. Along with that, we have like lean operation, because like a, a store doing fifty to hundred k a month, you only really need two VAs to manage the entire business. With a low ticket store, you need you know five six because all all the unhappy customers emailing you all day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, last two would be like fast shipping times. Um, one to two weeks is pretty average for heavy, heavy items that ship by truck. That's very average. Even Home Depot has the same shipping times as us. So, you know, it's very industry standard. Uh, and the last thing is um, high quality and luxury products. Very uh, straightforward. Basically, more expensive products, better build quality. And um, the luxury products don't have you know cheap materials that they're made out of. Um, so these are some of the reasons I essentially gave up traditional dropshipping to to do high ticket dropshipping full time. Um and then um Marcus did you prepare a testimonial that you wanted to share? Um 
<laughs> uh, I'll be honest, I, I I didn't, but let's just go and just freestyle it. Okay, I'm sorry, yeah, guys. I should have been a little bit more prepared. Yeah, no worries. But anyways, I shared the link here. Yeah, if you just want to check out here. our uh, client results, and we only been working together for less about a month actually. So like all of these re results are very recent. So uh check out this link guys um if you want to see all our here uh let me share my screen and i'll wrap it up okay all right yeah so over here do, you, do wait do you see it you see it yep okay i mean i'm not gonna go too crazy you guys could definitely check out this link ecom high ticket slash client results but these are some of the results that we've helped others achieve that just to show you like it's possible in the game, like you guys could just look into it here for yourself. And if you are somebody that might not have capital right now, and you're really just trying to make it work, this, what I'm about to show you might not be for you because this is going to be for people that maybe have some form of capital to work with. If you don't have money or if you don't have capital right now, you guys want to check out our $47 a month, um, membership program. So every single month, me and Trevor go into a live call and we'll basically answer your dropshipping questions, anything that you have. And inside over here, there is a course information where it's just going to give you A to Z on like what I wish I had. Like I paid my first course that I bought. Um, I'm not going to say his name. I'm going to say his name. Vince Wang, 997. I'll never forget his Facebook guys dropshipping course. I don't know if you know him, Trevor, but like I got started with that and I had to pay $9.97 out of pocket. This, you know, it's $47 a month with me and Trevor's guidance on calls. So that's going to be perfect for you. And, and if you don't even have, you know, funds or you're just trying to be really like minuscule with it. Yo, we also have like a nine hour course on our YouTube channel. So the information is there. The implementation though, if you're somebody that, you know, you might already uh, have some funds or you're just looking to find proper investment channels. We have two offers for you, basically mentorship, where you're going to have to put in the work to build out your store, but we'll share with you all the nuances that we know, or you could go into the done for you service. So we actually just, um, finished working with one of our done for you clients. We're not going to direct, I actually, they, I appreciate it. They want us to be private, but, um, what that entails is like, we, me and Trevor literally just went on the zoom call. And we just built out the store A to Z. We set up the ads. Trevor got the Merchant Center approved so fast. It's crazy. And we pretty much got the store up and running before their LLC was even like fully finished. Almost like, you know, in terms of getting like the resale certificate. And if you guys don't know what the resale certificate is, it's basically like the, the vendor agreement that we get to partner up with these suppliers that we work with in high ticket dropshipping. If any of this is excites your interest or you're, you're potentially interested fill out the forms that we have it's the best way for us to get to know where you're at and we could just point you in the right direction truthfully speaking as long as you're somebody that has commitment you're somebody that just uh is willing to put in that work any of these will work you you only have two resources in, in your life you either have time or you have money most people have tons of time but they have no money some people have tons of money, but no time. So where are you at right now in your life? If you have no money, but tons of time, then save up for the mentorship program so that we can help fast track your success. If you have literally no money at all, check out our free YouTube video, our free YouTube course, and the VIP membership. If you have tons of capital ready to invest, and you don't really want to do too much, you want it to be streamlined more, you want us to build it out for you, and then show you what you need to maintain, then we have that done for you service, depending on where you're at, depending on what you're trying to do with your life. Let us know by filling out that application. And I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen now. Trevor, do you have any final words for the amazing, immaculate peak flow audience? Uh, One last word is, um, yeah, if you guys took away value, make sure to check out all the resources Marcus linked um, inside of this call. But if you guys actually uh, want to make this like a reality, you guys have to take action because a lot of people sit on the sidelines and just look at this information and do nothing with it. I talk with a lot of people, you know, via DM 
that you know they take in, in all the free information but they do nothing with it it's like it's crazy it's crazy <laughs> i don't understand that i don't understand that when i was like going like going up i didn't have like i had to find the information and then i had to try it to see if it worked uh -huh. yeah that's pretty much it yeah perfect anyways guys uh me and trevor you know back to the trenches back to work we have some uh two uh fine tunes we gotta do because uh black friday is actually around the corner so you know we're setting up those ads email campaigns and you know figuring out even better ways to capitalize even more on q4 so if you guys are interested make sure you like comment subscribe hit the notification bell if you have if we have one and i'll see you guys on the live next week private facebook group let's go peace peace